It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. No, it's not. It's February the 7th. Christmas is long gone. That's the way it always works. If we're going to get some snow, it's almost always in February, maybe March. Better chance of those things in December. December is pretty mild in middle Tennessee. But it, it's gorgeous looking. It's already starting to melt off. But I have realized why Ian Stepler has coffee in his videos. It's not to drink it. It's to keep his hands warm. That's... That's the secret right there. Anyways, we're going to get into these colonies right here. It's about time for us to start feeding pollen patties if you're going to do it. Now, some people, you know, if you're further north, obviously you probably need to wait a good bit. Um, some people don't even feed them at all, so it's not like it's necessary. But I do. We're running the business here. We want to help support the natural stuff that's coming in, and this is how I know that it's about time to start. This is off of a maple tree and they produce some of the earliest pollens. They're extremely hardy, and the pollen is really high quality. Much higher quality than you know dandelion and stuff like that. It's not that dandelion pollen's bad, but this stuff is just awesome. So whenever I start seeing this, it gets me excited, and I'm gonna check this colony and see if there's any brood in it. We'll just be really quick, and then we're gonna check this smaller colony. Both of these are pretty young. Um, Carnica, or carny type bees, so get rid of that. Move this out of the way and we'll see if we need to feed a pollen patty. Probably go ahead and throw that on the big one over here. I'm going to go ahead and just pop that a little colony real quick and show you kind of what the bees are looking like right now. It's pretty cold right now. Look at that cluster though right there. I mean it's not the biggest thing in the world but it's very healthy. It's really exciting. And uh... You know, I'd say that's at least if you actually it was in warm temperatures and they were able to spread out. Probably about seven frames of bees, give or take. Maybe more, maybe a frame less. Either way, they look really healthy and once they get going good, they're going to be an awesome colony. And we made that. By the way, if you want to see how we made that colony, I'm going to leave a link right up here. And you can watch how we made that colony in 2020. Alright, let's get to the, uh, the big girl over here. We're going to be quick because it's cold, right? I don't recommend you necessarily doing this unless you know what you're doing. I'm doing it for video purposes. One, you can do it in places like Tennessee. And also, this is when we start feeding pollen patties. Rain, snow, all that stuff. Once we get going, we don't stop. doesn't matter if it drops down to 30 degrees. It's pushing 40 degrees right now, Fahrenheit. Pull this off. We've got some good weight in the top. That's a good sign. Bees typically are going to starve uh, later in spring. Um, if, you know, they usually don't do it for us in December or January unless we're really negligent. I'm just going to pop down in there and see if we have a frame of brood in here at all. Obviously, you can see these bees are moving around, so let's try to. It's really hard to move frames. Woo! And they they love it. I probably should have brought some smoke. Wow, I'm surprised I didn't get one out of that one. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. Look at that brood right there. Wow. Definitely throwing a pollen patty on this one. Wow. That's awesome. I love it. Fresh bees on the way. Well, we're not going to spend too much more time in here. There's a lot of honey weight in that top box, so that's good. We're just going to put this back together. I'm going to throw this pollen patty on here. It's going to be in the 50s this week, so they're going to get that maple pollen. I really believe in the next few days we're going to get that maple pollen probably Wednesday or Thursday. It's Sunday today. Super Bowl Sunday, not that you know, we're too busy fooling with bees to worry about that kind of stuff these days. Ah, they smell really good. Just picked up a full pallet load of these from Kelly's. I'm super excited. Laurel's super excited because we don't have to mix them by hand anymore. This is going to be the real trick. I this is why you bring your smoker though, is to push those bees down and out of the way. This is going to be fun. I mean, that's what I thought. Sorry, girls. All right. And I like sticking it kind of like that. 
breaking it up. That way they can get to the center of it. Don't have to worry about small hive beetles though this time of the year that much. Just kind of do that so we don't crush any bees. And you can even take this hive tool and kind of score it in between those gaps. That way the bees can get access to the mill a little bit more. But I don't like covering this whole area because there are a good bit of bees up in here. You know, so I don't want those bees to be completely alienated from those at the bottom due to that patty. So we want them to be able to kind of flow through the middle here. They'll consume it faster and it, it'll help with the heat and all that. But I mean, goodness, it's not even 40 deg degrees quite yet. Maybe it's pushing 40 now, but the snow's still sticking around, so I don't know. My hands are cold. That's what that coffee's for. But anyways, we're going to throw this back together. That was really quick. Man, I'm excited to see that brood. And there's a good chance there's a little bit more on the adjacent frames. But we don't need to spend a lot of time leaving this colony open. This isn't going to hurt our bees. Um, they'll, they'll be just fine with this. Anyways, you got to see that one over there see this one here and uh, I'm excited to see what we're gonna get in the future I almost threw that back down all right there we go there really wasn't much that could get crushed but I like to avoid crushing bees if possible all right oh man springs on the way baby it's on the way so that's our pretty much all of the inspection that we have for today but it's an exciting time of the year the day length is getting longer the bees realize that we're going to start getting some foraging days the bees have been getting good cleansing flights lately and that's pretty much our winters you'll go one week and we'll get 50s maybe even 60s and then you'll get another week where the highs will be you know freezing at the at the most i think uh, about 10 days from now seven to ten days we're supposed to drop down in possibly the single digits digits and get a high of a you know 20 something degrees so you know it just our weather fluctuates quite a bit but still overall pretty mild those maple pollens almost always hit around the first week of february sometimes the second week if it's a really mild year like years like we were having back in the mid you know, uh, you know early 2000 2006 2010 range i mean goodness we were getting maple to bloom at the third week of january fourth week of january it was, a really odd time to, to keep bees but you know the weather is always changing you just never know what to expect from year to year it's kind of what makes it a little bit fun and frustrating but once that maple pollen starts pouring into the hives as long as those bees have a decent sized cluster as long as they have a good queen and you know no mites all that stuff and they have what they need they're gonna really run off to the races and the pollen patty is Basically, it's a supplement. It's really not a substitute because it doesn't do a very good job substituting at all. But let's say that we get some good maple pollens and the bees really start hitting it hard and we don't throw that patty in there. And then we get some really rough weather for a long time. Maybe they run out of that maple pollen and then they start holding back again because they've run out of proteins and fats to raise more brood. That pollen patty can smooth out the gaps from one flow to the next. Sometimes you'll get bad weather and it'll completely remove a pollen flow. So that's what we use those pollen patties for. Nothing crazy. Um, again, it's by itself. It really doesn't do much. It really only works good when there's some a little bit of protein and fats in the hive to kind of complement it. Anyways, pretty exciting. Can't wait to do more. But what I'm really more excited to do is get inside and get my hands warm because unlike Ian Stepler, I don't really deal with this much cold weather. So Hawaii has spoiled me. Let's go, Laurel. See you in the next video. Yeah.